yo what is going on guys and today i thought you know what let me let me let me jump in that car that has stressed me out since it came out the car that i avoid the most and uh, i thought let me try and make an actual race setup for the porsche 991 gt3r because to be honest it's the car that i've always avoided and you know i've seen many a time people do insane times i've seen malinowski do insane times and i thought man at some stage i got i got to sort of bite the bullet and just try and get somewhere with this car man I, it's something i used to do all the time i used to just really sit around and just grind cars out until i could really find you know a setup that worked for me and i was never really able to make the the uh, porsche work for me so i've kind of just stayed away from it um i'm gonna try and do more more like cars like this i also need to do something similar with the ferrari evo because i just i just can't get along with that car but um I decided to come to uh, Nurbo Ring, a track that I really do like. Fastest time I've done around here is still in the Bentley 53.2, I believe. Um, so yeah, let's 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 see what we can do with the uh, with the Porsche, man. Because I tell ya, struggled struggled all life. I think I did like one CP race with this car when it first first came out, man. So <sighs> here we are. Hit that aggressive. And I'm, you know, I'm actually going to try some, I'm actually going to try some pretty radical stuff with the setup, man, because, um, yeah, it's just, you know, I know for me to, to get the car the way how I like to drive it, the Porsche is a very tricky car and I need to find a balance, bro. I need an actual balance where when I come off the brakes on this car, it doesn't try to kill me. So I need to do something um radical something different in the setup to make myself comfortable and um let's see what we can come up with man so track temperature is 29 air temp is 22 so we're probably gonna have to go up a little bit on the tire pressures and maybe go up five clicks for now until we actually figure out what the uh correct tire pressures will be let's just uh let's just go up quite a bit see what that does for now have a look at the rest of the setup uh we'll leave we'll, oops i'm gonna put the tc2 on four let's let's put some uh, telemetry laps on because I may need some telemetry okay we've got we're gonna put the brake um brake pads on one for now because we just know it's quicker um i'm gonna put the fuel down to about 35 and of course the steering ratio is is uh it's kind of personal preference for me i'm gonna go ahead and make it a little tighter and yeah one of the one of the biggest things i haven't always noticed about the porsche is if you pay attention to the uh the air of variation man like it changes a lot a lot that means like you're you know going through corners hitting the brakes you're getting a massive balance change as ride height of the car changes when you hit the brakes or come off the brakes and so on and so forth and kind of want to try and limit that a little bit um that may mean i'm gonna have to make the car a little bit stiffer just so the um the air of variation doesn't change as much man anyway let's see the eight and two rear wing to front wing eight and two interesting uh let's let's just go out and drive it and just see how she feels Green light. Go, go, go. all right oh great well my, my will is uh doing its best not to not to react to anything so i'm gonna have to plug it out and plug it back in because for some reason every time i come on the game this is just what my t300 does so Plug it out, plug it back in. It's such a, such a long process, bro. Oh, now it's frozen. <clears throat> Game's actually frozen on me. Right, let's drive it now, lads. Ooh. 
I've always, like, never thought the car handles bad. It just has moments where you just can't really explain <laughs> how the car just throws itself into the, throws itself into a spin. It's like nothing else, you know? It's like the front end is so good, almost like the rear end can't keep up. I always get the feeling like the, the Porsche is a car where you need to run lots of wing on. I think our tire pressures are wildly wrong, but that's fine. And this is this is these are the sort of corners I'm worried about. You know, fast changes of direction. Let's just get a feel for the car. Locking up the brakes, not great. Struggling a little bit. Um, yeah, the braking just looks like the brake bias is way too, way too forward at the moment. wonder you know with these aggressive setups does anyone actually use these you know the default setups does anyone actually use these and are they able to you know produce results because i always feel like the, the default setups are just terrible I mean, if I, I'm thinking if, if you're a new person to the game, you know, does this feel nice to drive on the default setup? Probably not. The back end steps out a lot, a 57.7, which is totally awful. I don't even know if it's worth going down to first gear there. Again, struggling to get the car slowed down. Uh, 
can tell the car's got so much grip, even without, you know, a setup that is made for your personal driving style. Obviously, the tire pressure is still well, well off what they need to be. I still feel like the brakes are too far forward. Technically speaking, the Porsche is supposed to actually be a, a, pretty, a rocket in a straight line, or pretty quick in a straight line, which sort of doesn't lean itself to the characteristics that it has in this game, compared to real life anyway. Uh, definitely don't have enough turning through here. It's a car that you really have to like push, you have to push it through the corners. Oh God, no. I think that's enough. Go back. And honestly, I feel like um, it's not enough downforces on the car. I feel like it'll probably respond a lot better with just way more downforce, man. I'm, I don't want to go crazy with like rake and stuff like that. Um, maybe put the front end of the car down, even though it did it did ride the curbs pretty nicely, actually. But tire pressures, we already know. Um, damn it, I forgot to put the telemetry laps back on. So we'll try and guesstimate the tire pressures a little bit. Okay. I'm actually going to put this on the TC2 on 4. Put the TC1 back down to uh, 1. We'll leave the fuel. And we want to... Can I mess with the brake bias a little bit? Because brake bias towards the front, it's just... I don't know, man. It just, I feel the locking up every time I hit the brakes. But again, this is something that's going to mess with the balance of the car. So I'm probably going to have to give myself a little bit more downforce as well. I know a lot of people, like I've seen, run this extremely rearwards, man. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for that just yet. Um, I want to make the car a little bit stiffer on the rear as well and i probably want to make it slightly stiffer on the front as well we need to make sure we don't have a crazy aero variation uh, when when we do hit the brakes i'm gonna go up on the bump stop range a little gonna give it a little bit of space before it actually hits the bump stop i'm gonna put that up to 10 which may seem crazy to some but for me it makes sense at least because you need to be able to ride that last chicane um and you know, I, I do want to put the, the ride height down somewhat to get a little bit more turning. Um, of course, the front splitter goes all the way up to five. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something that we're going to do or not, but let's let's put the, the rear downforce up. You see, we, we want the downforce, but we don't want to lose the uh, the front end. You don't want to lose, you don't want to make give the car understeer, you know. So um, let's maybe slap on a little bit of rake. Now our, our our base ride height um aero variation is now zero zero. So let's see how that affects the car. 
We could have done probably like a 55-5 on that last lap if it didn't go off. Let's see what where we will get to now. less issues already with the braking still seems to snap out of that corner when we get on um, when we get on the power thinking whether I even want the um, steering ratio even further down, maybe on 13 or something. Already feels more responsive. Uh, this is the big question. This is the tough corner. Okay, no issues through there on the outlap. Still slight issues getting on the power. A lot more rotation. Everything feels a little quicker through there. Still not perfect though. Definitely feel like we made progress on the setup already. that curb all wrong. Honestly, this car breaks so late, man. I'm gonna try to keep it in second here. It just feels way better on second. It's definitely fun to drive, man.
and another decent lap. Found loads of time. What are you down to 54 3? Right, let's let's uh let's reevaluate already, man. Already down to 54 3. Um just a few changes really and uh yeah it was uh made quite a big difference man let's see there's still uh, uh, maybe a, a couple of corners where i just feel let's let me go and actually check the replay we go to this i actually want to go in like a bird's eye view sort of thing So let's go up here. We can assess everything properly. And I'll sort of talk you through where I feel like there, there's still some weaknesses. <clears throat> Obviously, this bit is like easy enough. You know, just going down the straight. Let's see where this car breaks. Bro, you can, I, I feel like, for, for me in a Bentley, right, I break, let's just go up a little bit more. All right, in the Bentley, I sort of break, go back, go this way. As where the, where the pit lane sort of joins the middle of the track, in the Bentley, I'm starting to break around this area. And in the Porsche, I feel like I'm breaking around this area. So already, you've got to think of how much time you're actually gaining, you know, just in the braking zone compared to some of the other cars. And again, with the Porsche as well, you, you know, it's acceleration, it's pickup off of slow corners is, is well in advance of what you'd be doing in the Bentley, especially with the, the traction control cutting in. So even that point alone, I feel like I gained so much time, man. Just this whole acceleration phase. I mean, by no means are we, are we close to the kind of time I think we can do in this car, but certainly for you, like you can feel the grip, especially in the slow corners on the exits. I feel like the first sector wasn't too bad. This corner, I'm still kind of struggling. To think. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm actually gonna run slightly wide. The car does tend to get a little bit sideways through here it wasn't too bad but for me i think we could have been closer to the apex again here we don't really hook up the apex again but managed to get on the power soon enough this corner again you can break pretty deep in most cars actually sort of turn it into a v-shape I didn't quite get back towards the um, back towards the apex, which I think I could have probably done that better. Another half attempt, quite easily there. And through the Schumacher S's, I, f I feel like I'm lifting more than I have to, um, just because I I don't know, man. It's it's just that not being used to, you know, not being used to the car through there with the Bentley. You kind of know even if you hit the curb, you're gonna have no problems. Whereas in the Porsche, you're kind of thinking, oh, I, I need to miss the curb because if I if I hit it, I'm going to badly upset the car and I could end up in the wall. And it's just finding that confidence. Uh, I still think that I can carry more speed for the first part of the Schumacher S. There we go, hold it in third. Get back to the left-hand side. And I, I feel like I waited a little bit too long to get on the throttle there. And obviously you're gonna carry that deficit all the way down the straight. And this this is the one corner that, you know, I would say on this track, I kind of, not fear, but it's the one I'm sort of, I uh, hope I get this one right because you know it can literally kill your lap time, man. So all in all, not, not too bad. The car felt okay, but I feel like there's still a lot of progress that can be made, man.
and what, what's crazy is like you don't have to change crazy amount bear in mind we haven't even touched the the dampers yet you don't have to change a crazy amount to get the car working we literally went from you know 55 eight well my first the first initial lap was a 57 7 but even so from a 50 55 8 to a 40 54 3 is quite a big jump with just a few clicks man and you know the porsche is, is that type of car you know you can find time by just nailing a good setup that's comfortable for you because it's a car where you need to find your comfortable comfortability otherwise if you don't it's gonna be it won't be that fun to drive you know but still i would say like in these sort of conditions with 30 liters of fuel i think the the aliens would definitely be probably hitting low 53s um definitely be in the 52s in quality for sure so I think our tire pressures were still, was it the front tire that was still a little bit low? I believe. Maybe we can jump that up a little bit. But yes, uh, let's see. The uh, the extra wing for me did make a, a quite a big difference. Um, I want more front end, probably slightly more front end, but without the cost of the rear grip, I would say. The, the diff feels okay at the, at the moment as well. Did wanna, I kind of want to try thirteen on the steering ratio, just to see what that, see how that feels for me. So I'm gonna try that. Um, if I move the front splitter, changes the error ratio variation by point one. Now let's see what, see what happens if I change the ride height. The ride height changes it by 0.6, which is crazy. Wow. Bro, I think that 0.6 would be a totally different feeling car. Um, you know, with, with the front wing changes, you you don't lose, you don't lose much straight line speed when you know when putting on front aero. It's most of the straight line speed is lost from the. Uh, when you change the the rear wing so even if i put the front wing up to four it's still uh it's still only changed by a point two which is still four you know four clicks less than if i was to completely just change the ride height man that's, that's insane so we'll leave the ride height on 54 for now um yeah this this Let's try it, lads. Let's try it. Balance shouldn't be too different. I see why people like this car though, man. Whoa. It just feels like you can just throw the front into corners, man. I started to slide it a little bit more now. Probably because of my uh, steering ratio as well. I think you need to go down to second for that.
All right, here we go again. A little too late on the brakes this time. There's the first big snap that we've had. I'm actually going to go down on the ABS a little bit. I think that 13 steer, steering ratio may be a little too sensitive. Messed up a little bit there. That was almost flat. No. I feel like I'm struggling in the last corner, for sure. <laughs> Hold up, we're going off. Right, I have to say the 14 on the steering rack does feel a bit better. Let's see if I can open up Motec and actually find the correct tire pressures, man, that I actually need. I, I do prefer to do my tire pressures via Motec just to get the, uh, the actual perfect average over the whole lap. Right. We'll just wait for that to load up. Then I'll show you guys on the, on the screen exactly what i mean by the average tire pressures over the lap still yet to touch the dampers 
it's gonna be interesting what the dampers look like um on the histogram because i i still feel like the car is uh what the things that i would change at the moment is um i still feel like sometimes when putting your foot down that the uh the back end steps out quite a lot so i'd actually would try and keep the same rotation but maybe lower the rear ride heights so i could get that acceleration and be able to just plant my foot down and how we're gonna do that we must figure out oh i move this over here boom 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 pressures so let's go to this is our last last lap where's it the um these are that before oh yeah on our last lap 27.6 was the rear right i believe 27.2 or basically 27.3 if you round it up to the closest uh number so there's still you know still room for improvement with the tire pressures the hottest the tire pressures got on that lap was 27.5 front left 27.6 front right 27.5 rear left and 27.7 rear right so that's the hottest that they get on the lap and then you've got the coolest that they get on the lap and you, you kind of don't want this big variation you want it to sort of be you don't really want them getting you know any colder than like a 27.4 27.5 you know between that region and you probably don't want them getting any hotter than 28.0 so we try and keep the tires in that window so we can go up by i would say two clicks on the front All right let's let's try and uh try and minimize this a little bit it seems we can still see it somewhere put it here it'll probably disappear as soon as i click on this anyway but um Let's open that up a bit. Because oh, I can't see it properly like this. So, <laughs> so um, I think. Hold on. Let me move it to this other screen because it's very, very hard to see. So yeah, what we're going to do is go up by let's try two clicks on the front front left. Um three clicks on the front right. We need another three clicks on the rear left. And just the one click on the rear right so what i was talking about before was trying to get the uh keep the same rotation but um having slightly better feeling under acceleration and uh for me maybe the ride height is a little higher so we're getting a, just a little bit sideways into the corners Again, that might be because of the steer ratio I had on 13, which I've put back now. So I'm going to drop this by two clicks. It almost put us back to the error variation we had before. When we had just two on the, on the uh, front splitter. And actually, first, first off, first of all, first of all, Let's, let's save the progress that we've made already. Um, wow, well, 2019, January 2020, when we uh, last drove this car here, bro. That is well over a year and a half. So I think we can, we can delete that. We'll just save over this base setup. Yes, sir. Temperature has in fact gone up now to 30 track. 
But yes, let's um let's drop this by two clicks. And I really wanna I wanna try something radical in this car, man. I wanna try you know something that we used to do on project cars where we used to actually run more rear camber than front camber. I'm not sure how it all how it will work out on this car, but um I, I seem to remember like like quite privately doing this on P cars. I know it's not the same type of game, but it did make that Porsche a lot more stable when trying it, man. And I feel like, you know, to get the cars to the next level, you gotta be trying things that you know, outside outside of the box, man. So let's put this front camber down. And we're going to put this rear, what does the rear camera go up to? It's 3.5. Okay, let's, let's, let's make it evens. All right. And then with the rear toe, we're going to go minus rear toe, which is going to give us quite a lot of rotation. All right, let's <laughs> let's see what we've let's see what we've done to the balance of the car now. This should be uh, pretty interesting. I can feel the, I can feel more of the understeer in the slow corners. Uh, still, the back end steps out quite a lot. There we go. Definitely seem to be struggling through the uh, tire corners now. I can step out a bit. Maybe need to tweak the brake bias a bit. <laughs> oh my god. What a sneeze. But that messed us all up, lads. And for some reason, my eyes just keep watering. <sighs> anyway, let's get back on track. 
Okay, we've we've we've, we've out. Oh my god, we've hit we've hit a bump. Don't hit the wall, please don't. We've got the wall like damage on the. Wow. Well, okay. Anyway, there was a couple of things we didn't like. And I think it was too much rear toe. I think. Go down on that a bit. We lost some of the responsiveness in the slow corners. And we we still did have quite a lot of a uh, quite a lot of wheel spin. It wasn't like massively bad, but it was definitely still there. So let's go down, let's go down another click on the rear. Okay. And let's see what happens if we feel. You know, sh should we try this minimum ride height on the front, bro? I want to try it. I do want to try it. Let's go back to two. Right, let's, let's try this. We are now trying some very different things. I feel like this car is all about how you get out of corners, man. It's just, I mean, I, I can feel it just a little bit off balance somewhere. Luckily, take a wider line into the last corner. I think taking that massive curb helps. Let's stop this line a little bit. Great through there either. Right, so at the moment, what I say is off throttle, there's off throttle understeer. I 
I feel like we can fix that. Still messing up through there. No one near the apex there. Well, there again, you see the uh, slight bit of off road understeer. I actually feel like I can I can throw the car around more with less consequence, but there is that bit of understeer, which is kind of like a safety mechanism, is kind of. Uh, I, I would say it's, it's affecting the car a little bit. I'm going to go down the preload, I believe. Um, try to brake bias a little bit more to the rear as well. And maybe, maybe we just take the risk of a little bit more front end. Now this, this can, like with this car, it's so sens sensitive, it can go left very quickly. I wonder if people just run max wing around here. Uh oh. Woo! Somehow didn't die. And also you've got to think about what, you know, what setup can allow you to do the same lap times over and over again. Feel like a very good first sector to be honest.
Damn, I had to get out of the throttle just a little bit. Oh Christ. It's actually a lot more forgiving than I thought when once you hit that curb, man. Okay, so we found a bit of time. Christ, and we messed up the braking. Somehow still up. Awful first sector. Try and focus on getting this last chicane right. Turned in too early. Oh, God. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. That happened. That happened. Great. Right. We're going to drop that down a bit. Put that up. I feel like, actually, with the lower front camber, I feel like your tyres will definitely last longer in the race. I'm going to go up on the front toe. Quite significantly. Other than that, um, maybe the preload go up just a little bit. Because I feel like as I'm hitting the brakes, it's just, the front end is just like off throttle. You know, turning just a little bit sooner than I would like. Sort of the balance of the car is uh, shifting towards the front end just a little bit too quick. Other than that, we've done absolutely nothing on the dampers just, just yet. I, I kind of want to try max wing. Or I could completely... Take the front wing off and go up on the rear again but of course we were getting that we were getting that wheel spin in the beginning and i feel like in the slow corners man the uh front splitter just sort of helps get that nose in a bit but which way should we go what should we try first max wing um again i mean the front ride height still feels okay but you can see the difference and when we hit the curbs wrong, it can, you know, sort of throw the car out of control. Can we go back up to 54? Maybe try max, max front wing. Um, I believe, did we go up? A, no, let's, let's, let's try both. Why not? I think the balance was 0 0.3 before, wasn't it? There we go. And we've put the preload up just a little. Hey man, we're, we're, we're absolutely going to be living on the edge. I have to bear in mind the aliens are in the 52s with this car around here. There's, there's definitely like tons of time to find in this car.
And is, it, is it a car that I would use in the future? You know, if I could, you know, get an understanding into, you know, a setup that I like, that I can base most of my setups off of, then I don't see why I wouldn't. ABS definitely kicking in quite a lot. Tyres, not really up to temperature yet, but I can already tell I've got a lot more turning. And there you see it. There you see the back end starting to come round. So let's go up on the front brake bias a bit. Let's go. Put my foot down, don't seem to be having the uh, back end stepping out problem anymore. Slightly too deep. didn't need that to happen at all we just missed the uh turning phase hope the tires ain't too damaged what i've noticed as well the porsche definitely doesn't seem like a first lap type of car at all some cars you can get away with doing a pretty decent lap on the first lap, the Porsche, just not there, man. And my rear left is absolutely on fire. Wasn't the best. Didn't really hit any apexes in the first sector there. Again, struggled through the entry of there. Still quite bad through there, man. Let's let's go back. I feel like we definitely need the. Uh, 
I'm going to put the preload down even further because I feel like it, you know, struggled with that. Is the front end a little too stiff? Not that bad down. And uh, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can instantly feel the difference. Even though I put the front split out to five, I can feel the difference in where the front, in, in when the front of the car doesn't go into, especially the tight corners with just one click of uh, front ride height, man. It's very sensitive. And I feel like, like this, you're going to see a lot more oversteering moments. It is a very, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a brutal car when it comes to setup, man. We're going to soften that a little bit more as well. Right, it's, it's definitely a, a tough car. Let's put the front cambers up just a little bit. Reduce the rear toe. Let's get it on. I feel it, lads. This is the one. We're trying to make a, a fast but safe setup. That's even possible in the Porsche. The back end started to step out again, but it's early doors, tires not up to pressure. Okay, now it really turns in there. I feel like it's quite oversteering through there now, but it's it, it might be the good kind of oversteer that really gets the car to the other side of the track and rotates it through the faster corners. Oh, you can feel it off throttle. Starting to go. Definitely more on the loose side now. God damn it. Yes, I can feel the rotation now, guys. That's a little bit of time getting sideways there.
It would have been quite a big improvement, but for the invalidation. Doesn't that overshoot for a second? Just missed the apex. Perfect slide on through there. The improvement has been made, okay? The improvement has been made, and let's 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 go through the setup because this is this is part one, guys. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on this car until we until we you know get it where we want. But we've I feel like we've made progress, right? So from now on, I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna be trying different cars and I'm gonna be trying to work on them as we go. So you guys can follow the progress that I'm I'm making. You can copy, do whatever you know. So today we've sort of, you know, just figured out sort of the aero balance, which I feel like will give us the best result at the moment. Maybe, I mean, we could maybe go down by one click on the rear ride height, maybe. That is a possibility. And I'm sure there's people that run it with a lot, lot more rake than this, man. With a lot more rake, but... It's whether we want to go there. Maybe that's something we can try next time out. Um, is running it with a lot more rake. Maybe making the rear end a lot softer. Making the front end stiff. And see where that takes us. I feel like, you know, there's definitely something there. Um, we went from 55s to 53. We haven't gone proper low fuel yet either. Although 9 laps isn't like an amazing amount of fuel. But... I feel like the progress is it's, I feel like it's coming lads i feel like it is coming so before before i end this video we've got to we got to get a 53 all right we've got to hit a 53 so next time out we've got a you know another goal to to go for it's looking like a like a 53 8 that last lap um maybe maybe i reckon one click down in the rear ride height let's see let's see I, I'm pretty confident in saying that I believe the fastest guy is to be running quite a lot of rake in this car. Because, you know, to get get the fastest times out of the Porsche, you may need the car to be pretty damn loose. But then, you, you know, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I, for one, I am not comfortable with being uncomfortable. So... I have to make something that is safe for me. If you know what I mean. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's what the best drivers are able to do. Able to drive the car right on the limit. And that's true for the best drivers in the real world and in sim racing, man.
look at drivers like Sebastian Vettel, who's a great driver, but not when he's uncomfortable. And you look at the drivers like Hamilton and Verstappen can just drive through problems, if you, if you, if you will. This is our final go because I don't want this. I don't want this this video to be like hours and hours long, guys. I just want to show you guys a bit of the progress. We give us something to work on, and when I do a part two, hopefully, we'll have gained so much more time from where we started, guys. We took way too much curb. Okay, we've messed up this first lap. But it's okay. Sometimes with this corner, it feels easier to just go down to second. I feel like you just lose too much time. And that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Sometimes what's easier is not what's quicker, man. Jeez. Certainly fighting it through that section anyway. Right, here we go, let's get the 53. Not a great start. We're right on the cusp here, lads. Oh no, we've messed it up, surely. Oh, we did mess it up. Thank you. 
Uh oh. Fifty-four zero. With with what, quite frankly, was an absolutely awful last sector. <laughs> I think we did uh, on the lap we invalidated. We did a sixteen-six. Another two temps. Um, let's try and let's, uh, what's our best first sector? Fifty-four five. It looks like even though it was invalid, but hey, yeah, like a fifty-four five. Let's say we should probably be around a uh, 53.7 at the moment, which will still leave us half a second off of the Bentley. I think next time out, we'll take some, take a bit of fuel out. Um, we at least got to match our Bentley time, bro, at the very least. For me to, you know, for me to be happy, I can't, I think the Bentley conditions might have been like a couple of degrees cooler, I think. Um, a couple of degrees down on track temp. I think the air temp's about the same. I believe it's like 22. Is it 22, 27 or is it 20, 25? I can't remember what the conditions are. I think that was set in the AOR lobby, I believe. Um, can't quite remember the exact conditions for the, for the Bentley lap. But I'm sure it, it wasn't like crazy cold. So... We need to, we, you know, we need to step it up. We need, we need to, we need to uh, get there in this car. Uh, we'll, we'll save over that. And uh, definitely next time out, we're going to try some, a lot more rake, bro. We're going to try a lot more rake. We'll have to stabilize the rear of the car somehow. Maybe make it quite a bit softer, but so far, we'll quickly go through the setup. Um... Still running the uh, minus rear toe on the rear. I think that we might reverse once we put more rake on the car. But well, let's see. And uh, see, for me now, how the car is at the moment, this to me would be like a like a safe setup. Like that should be in the game, bro. This to me is a is a safe setup. I don't feel like it's pushing all the boundaries of the capability of the car, and. I still feel like it's uh, it's faster than the default, if you know what I mean. So, I feel like this is something that people could use if they're not used to the Porsche and they want to get in it and have like relative good feeling. And I think you could probably use the setup, man. So, I hope you guys do try it. We haven't done anything on the dampers yet, which we will be doing next time out. So, guys, enjoy the setup so far. It's a work in progress, and. Uh, next time out we'll hopefully improve it and take the set up to the next level but anyway guys i'm glad you guys are here for the video it's crypto tng like and subscribe also if you want to support your boy you can become a, a member by hitting the blue button or join my patreon and get all the secret sauce that i have and all my other setups that i give to my members and patrons so but anyway guys crypto tng i'll catch you guys in a bit peace